welcome to Library Rugby. We're going to have a, a well, special two-year edition. Um, I think around this time, we have, we have a date uh, around the 28th of May where we created our YouTube channel. We're still um, but, for the exact date. <laughs> yeah, but we're not, we're not 100% sure on when we originally came up with the Line Break Rugby idea because we think we did it before that. Um, I'm here with Sav, your host, regularly, uh, and I've actually brought someone who hasn't been on the podcast before but is an original. Uh, yeah, he's an original. Ah, close enough. He's a, he's he is a line break original. He's, he was the, <laughs> he was the he was the driver behind the website uh, for sure. Um, and it's and it's Adam. Hi um, there, guys. How you doing? And he and he hasn't been here. No, I've and, been and, very absent for uh, a good reason. Um, since we started the website back in 2015. Um, started to take this whole sports reporting and stuff a bit more seriously and um in january 2016 started the journalism course and then got a job as a sports journalist in june last year so almost almost a year till i've uh, been a, a sports journalist Matt, man's making strides and <laughs> uh, and as a, as a result of that he, i mean if you go back in the archives, you can see some of his uh, his line break work. Anyway, um, oh yeah, but, it'll be far back. <laughs> but but now you're uh, now you're doing it semi professionally. Well, professionally, I suppose, isn't it? You're getting paid for it. I am getting well, yeah, not paid much, but uh, <laughs> nah. money money in the bank. Employers, I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's hard work. Don't get me wrong, but. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I get paid to watch like football and rugby. I do mainly football at the moment, um, but hopefully in the future I can do a bit more with the rugby reporting. But that will come. I've only been doing this for eleven months now, so time will the come. The inter- interesting is it. I mean, <clears throat> the the clash between line break obviously is rugby. Um, are you are you doing match report? I mean, we haven't spoken that much about it. Are you doing match reports, or are you doing more Charlie Morgan esque analysis for football? Um, so mainly, it's um, what my week consists of. Um, so I do like player interviews and things like that it's during the mm-hmm. week. Um, I cover a football team uh, in the Scottish league um, called Dumbarton. Um, they are a part-time team. Um, they're the only part-time team in the league compared to everyone else who's full-time. Um, so I kind of have to fit around their work commitments and things during the week, um, give them calls for the newspapers and things like that. Um, then on Saturday, I go to wherever they are in the country, um, do like preview pieces. And then during the game, I report on the match. Um, give like Twitter updates, things like that. And then as soon as full time hits, basically need to get a report online of the of the game. Um so it's normally like five uh, five, ten minutes most. Um after it's the full time whistle's gone. Um and then rushing down, getting ready to do post match interviews with uh managers normally first and then a player or two from either team basically and then sort of um with all the journalists there you just basically all couple together it's normally the report goes straight up that's fine then um for newspapers and things we normally save the manager's stuff for the sunday and then player stuff for the monday um so, so there's a definite set order so i mean you're pulling back the curtain for for me, certainly, because I've never. Uh, yeah, so if there's a set order that they release certain things. That's that's at this level. Um, yeah. If you go higher up, say like your yeah, Premier League and things like that for football or um, other press conferences, they'll do it straight online. Um, okay. Instantly, but um, for most you have of these, to spread the info over two papers to. Yeah, basically okay. for these, um, I work on weekly papers, so it's slightly different. I normally just stick the stuff online. The on the whatever day it is um but yeah mm-hmm. um it's it's sort of an unwritten rule um like okay. you, you wouldn't have to do it but i think you'd be 
pretty frowned upon by all the journalists there. Um, if you suddenly started taking, yeah, yeah, the wrong order. Um, you can obviously, like in that, so say there's like six or seven people interviewing the one player. If say the club, say Dumbarton Football Club or another football club want to interview their own player, if it's a separate mm. interview, then they can do whatever they want with it basically um okay so that's that's fair game basically but um yeah would, that's... You, would you say and this is not to put words in your mouth because you well we should say adam <laughs> already had a, a website and he was writing aviva premiership reviews and team previews and everything by himself um, but would you say that line break kind of catalyzed you a little bit perhaps to go and drive forward and do it seriously or yeah, was it already I... Um, when I started, so I dropped out of uni um, and didn't really know what to do with my life. I was kind of a bit of a, a mess and I uh, just started working in a coffee shop basically part time just to sort of tide myself over and figure out what I want to do uh, at the age of 25. It's not too old, but still getting on. Um, kind of just did, I thought about sports writing before. Um, never seriously though so and I kind of always see on the subreddit people doing things and I just thought why not have a go at this myself mm -hmm. um, 100%. Enjoyed, do enjoyed doing it um, just did it as a solo thing to start with and then so you guys were doing the podcasts and thought it'd be something better to do United rather than both just doing it individually basically and kind of kicked me on to take it a bit more seriously I guess um, and mm -hmm. it's paid off <laughs> well you're doing well. and we should say that um, ge generally speaking we can't be too specific but the uh, the line break uh, crew have been able to move on to better things which is kind of why we've slowed down posting quite a lot on the actual site yeah uh, um, definitely I as as much as I would love to do more line break stuff, the the real the the one that pays has to take priority. Sadly, sometimes, um, even though I definitely would like to be doing more stuff for a line break for sure. But hopefully that can ease once I I slightly got better into the job a bit more now. And uh, well, hundred percent. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention CC just because he. I mean, he's moved on to something uh, better uh that he's getting paid for and it's it's sport related so he's de he's definitely moved up in the world and he's feeling a lot better about it adam as you've just heard's moved on actually doing this professionally um so it's all about having that drive i think yeah if you love something and that drive for it it really does get you through i was taking a gamble for sure though um i did a so like i did a fast track course in newcastle um which is now closed but it was with the press association who are like a news agency yeah, um they they do photography and they do reports and everything basically so to explain like a news agency um it's if save uh the mirror um the mail the sun um want something covered but can't get their own journalist to do it or it's a popular event a news agency will have someone down there doing say like a match report or c taking pictures and they sell their work to um the bigger to all these papers basically yeah, yeah. um for whatever's used um so you actually you find quite a lot of the stuff um because there's been more and more cutbacks in the journalism world because of um just the, the decline in newspapers basically um which is Lime why we're on. online. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, it's easier to reach an audience when you're online as well as the Daily Mail. It's easier. Proven. It's yeah. Um, I think it's something really. that journalists, I think, kind of <laughs> shot themselves in the foot a bit, um, giving away online content for free. Um, the the price for a Daily Mail, um, which is the most popular paper in the UK, um, uh, a page. Um, page advert is for one day is eighty five thousand, um, and then so for um, that's, an a, that's ad, a full page ad. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
and online um, for just doing adverts and stuff. I think for a million views of an advert, I think something worked out to about a thousand pounds. It's absolutely minuscule compared to um, the numbers. But like that might not be hard on <laughs> like exact it, but numbers, it, but, it's, but it's, yeah. it's it's huge the the difference in numbers and people use ad blockers as well. So I uh, just completely yeah. I think it's, companies it's are struggling to find it, yeah. basically, yeah. Damn which is yeah. which is what we'll get to with um well we'll talk about that later with line break where we want to move to. Um but it was it was originally set up and I, I haven't spoken to Adam about what I I think you well, I think you know what my vision for line break was when I first kinda podcasty slash we had that for those first discussions. Yeah, definitely. I think um there was how many of us were involved about five or six of us at the start um yeah and we've sort of slowly expanded and got gained a few people along the way um the podcast is doing a lot better than we were originally um <laughs> <laughs> getting more organized and more more structured um and happening more regularly as well, which is only a good thing. Um, regular, regular posting is the key. Yeah. I think, I, I, if I, I if I was going to re-explain my vision uh, or my idea behind it, it was um, a person, well, a representative from each rugby nation, able to provide that point of view within either a podcast or a uh, or an article setting. Um, so I, I, I didn't I didn't want. So for example, you get lots of. The Telegraph bangs on about England. Um, obviously, Stuff New Zealand bangs on about Kiwis and SMH. Is it SMH in Australia? Uh, City something Morning Herald or something like that. Is that? Yeah, the City Morning Herald. Is that Sydney? The... Sydney, the city. Yeah. So that's the. So that, that that's you know that's Australia, and then um, I'm not sure what South Africa's paper is. Maybe. Uh, they have all the online stuff with the Supersport. And things uh, well. 20 super, is it super sport 24 or i don't something? know if I, I don't know if south africans want to be known by that show but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but that's essentially you know that there's lots of different sources of information and viewpoints and i wanted to really uh give rugby fans a place where they could go on and see what an argentinian or a south african or australian thought about that game against england and then an Englishman could kind of understand the other side of the, you know, the other side of the coin, uh, in some respects. Yeah, um, especially we, we've using. Kind of, we've kind of achieved it a bit. Yeah, I think using Reddit because it's so international, and I think everyone sees on the subreddit the the amount of different flares and things from countries all over the world. Like I, I think I've learned more about European rugby than I think I'd ever dreamed to imagine, just from looking at the sub and seeing 100%. more about Georgia and Spain and Germany. Um, it's just something I would never encounter in sort of mainstream media. Um, but it's and, fascinating. And genuinely, learn. genuinely learning about the French as well. That, that, yeah. The conversations, even just the, the casual ones that I have with Fred um, on our, uh, on our chat page or whatever. It's just, it's, it's, I'm getting more information daily uh, from actually talking to, specialized fans of that country than i would from any sort of print media yeah um, and i think that dynamic <laughs> approach is definitely helping well i think it's the way forward personally I, I don't i don't see why i can see why you'd get views if you give an entrenched point of view from the telegraph etc all about england because that's your market but i can see you can open yourself up to an international market and really get viewpoints from around the world um, yeah I think I think it's the way forward. I mean, it's not it's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea, but we'll see. I think most people are enjoying it, and we'll get bigger and bigger. Like to think so. <laughs> That's the idea. Um, my next question, Adam, is: will, will you be returning at any point to write some articles, or are you obviously the, the paid work's the paid work? The paid Saturday. work's the paid work, but I have yeah. a few Saturdays off now because the season's over for. So the, Scottish, the Scottish football season is back in about a month's time. Uh, for, is it, for is it that reason. quick? I uh, they're starting like a league cup, which nobody takes seriously. They just use. So you, you've got you've got this time to talk about the New Zealand and the Lions tour. Ah, uh, I do indeed. But, uh, <laughs> um, which, oh, uh, if you want me to get off the fence, I think it's going to be an absolute pasting. Um, 
Oh, really? Yeah, I don't see it any other way than a New Zealand win. Um, when the Lions, when sort of the Northern Hemisphere teams were riding high last time, and mm-hmm. Australia were having a dip, um, they just scraped a win. Um, the only way we yeah. won was by putting out half the Wales team. Um, <laughs> yep. Um, I'm which, while well, some people some people didn't like, but I mean, playing with more partnerships and more familiar teammates is, was the way to go. I think um, it's, the, it's the way aside. it's the way to it's the way to win games. I think <clears throat> I can see the side. There's two sides, obviously, and we everyone's banged on about the Lions forever. But the idea, I suppose, behind the Lions is bringing a huge mixture of players to play together, and there's a huge amount of sentiment behind mixing. So when you have to play what was then, I think, the, were they a Grand Slam winning team in 2013? Uh, I'd have to check they had that. A good, yeah, they had I a think good, they had a very good Six Nations. Yeah. Um, but you see it even with the Barbarians now. I mean, that's even, that, that admittedly is a shorter time period, but um, against the bigger teams, even like the England Saxons, the second string, they normally get, pasted by uh, admittedly the barbarians is not always the first choice of everyone around the world um yeah but the, the, I even think even if they've got a fantastic set of individuals yeah um it, it, it takes a long time just to gel them and obviously i mean the barbarians is not as as, as serious as say the lions where it's a bit more of uh obviously some some will take it seriously but i mean from the videos and stuff you see like it's a bit of a laugh and I've, yeah that's... Well, I've seen, I saw Will, Will Greenwood on Twitter was having an absolute I think they were drinking and having all sorts of fun like the, yeah. the Barbarian setup just looks really chill and, re- and good fun it looks pretty fun to be involved in don't get me wrong but it looks yeah it looks fantastic um, so I mean so this is something again we haven't haven't talked about but where where do you see uh, the future of line break other than just poodling along with s- slowly increasing subscribers <laughs> and, and viewers I think we need to probably not get too ahead of ourselves while we still have taken things quite slow I think in the last two years um, mm-hmm. I think we can't be too over ambitious I think well we've talked about it for a while but um, getting the iTunes up and running is probably the next big step um well i mean i i think and maybe the one person who's found out how to listen to us on itunes will tell us uh <laughs> but somebody <laughs> is listening to us on itunes um but getting that up and running um yeah. and hopefully once we've got up and running we can sort of spread our influence and hopefully get more people involved get more people's opinions um from different nationalities and hopefully once We've got our foot in the door, basically, um, with the bigger boys. Um, can start doing, say, interviews with bigger players from different nationalities, giving insights into their the way their country operates with rugby. And, yeah, just I think that would be my on, ideal. On, on the slow forward. build. Yeah. I mean, we've had, well, I say we, uh, Ed has had a conversation with Nigel Owens about... Um, coming on and and he w- he was talking about doing an uh, ask me anything on the sub as well which i thought was quite uh, a big step would be quite interesting for reddit just to actually have a conversation with their hero you know they say never meet your heroes but i think would, would nigel owens actually stand up to the scrutiny of reddit or would uh oh no i think i think he's a character that sort of unites everyone um don't as many too many that dislike him obviously referees aren't always the most liked people but um I did you see Fit, did you see Fitzgerald's uh, article? No, I didn't know what was that. Oh, he was right. Wow. Well, me and Fred have had this conversation not on the podcast, but we've had this conversation. Basically Fitzgerald was saying that there was no he was he wasn't a fan basically he wasn't a fan of the big showmanship where uh, Nigel Owens kind of t- took over the game a little bit. Like he was giving back chat to the players kind of. It's the way he operates, it's the way he works as a ref, it's his personality. Mm-hmm. Um I think it rubs off and you see it with Wayne Barnes as well. Um, they're able to have a laugh with players and have a bit of banter and that makes it go a bit smoother. I, I don't think it's yeah. stealing the show at all. I don't think he does it for the attention or anything. 
I think he just does it because that's his personality. Um, it's it's him, isn't it? And yeah, it's the way, and I it's don't. The way he and I swear, it's where I'd want rugby players to be, and I think referees as well. It makes it for the role that they, they play in rugby, which is huge. I think they need to. I think it's interesting because there's a certain there's a certain ref that can get away with it. Wayne Barnes and uh, Owens, um, I think, perhaps are two very good examples. However, I watched. Uh, was it, I think it was a Super Rugby game or a, Fra- or a French rugby game where the the ref tried to give a little quick quip about something and it just it just didn't sit right it was it, it felt like it was coming from a person who had seen a a Nigel Owens quip and tried to emulate it and it and it didn't just it didn't quite flow yeah I you know I suppose that's with everything though sometimes those those jokes in your head can work and sometimes they're just fall flat on their face yeah uh, <laughs> yeah I, I suppose we should we should never go at someone for not quite carrying off humor uh, i think if we did that we'd probably uh, spend the whole podcast yeah. talking about our uh, our failures yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that would basically be it um I, i'm excited for the future of line break i'm and i and it's interesting to hear your point of view to aim to get bigger players and to get uh, other people in so we the you quoted the big boys i'm and and i can i agree with that point of view getting in other players would be brilliant i'm kind of in the the realm of just trying to find that argentinian that italian um i'm trying to think of a smaller nation maybe the uh, a japanese fan just to just to really get that world view back on track yeah definitely um that, that that's that's where I sit personally. Yeah, definitely. That's that's what <laughs> I would like to see as well. But um, if if anyone would like to be one of these Italian or a, a Japanese people that uh, are fans that step forward and give us a bit of help, feel free to contact us as well. Um, can leave yeah. details on um, in the notes for YouTube. Well, but, um, I think yeah. line line break rugby at gmail dot com. You send us an email on there and. Uh, I think yeah. Fred, Fred, Fred will pick it up and look at it and go, "Oh, this is probably for someone else." <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we'd love to hear from you. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all about spreading the the word of rugby, basically, and trying to give people a different insight into things, which I think is a nice way of doing. And and putting putting Adam's voice back on. Uh, Back up back, the dulcet back on tones. You, you you haven't been on since we did the reboot because we did no. some stuff before, um, um, but since yeah. the the reboot happened, since the rebranding on Mondays, which is my my worst day, while well, I just point out, <laughs> we we literally went like out. What's the, what's the worst day for Adam? Which which one can't he do? He's, he's definitely working on a all Monday. my all my newspaper deadlines are for for Monday because I work on weekly papers. So. Let's record on Mondays. <laughs> Uh, no, so in reality, that's the uh, I, I say the best day. It's the best day for rugby because all the rugby's happened. Yeah, for sure. And then you can just because there's a reason you have newspaper deadlines. It's because all the sports happened, and then you've got to get it in. Ah, for sure. Um, so it, it, that, that, we're kind of operating under the same idea, which is not apparently the best for our creator. <laughs> which is yeah. So I mean, the, how many of us are there now? Twelve at least. There's twelve of us as well. There's been a couple more that have come and gone in the same time. Um, but yeah. yeah, we've had a, we've had a few come in and create a couple of things and then disappear off because they were happy with what they did and they, they just they they couldn't fully commit. There's quite a lot of not fully committers because people have lives. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think in this, yeah, when when this doesn't pay and we don't we do it for an enjoyment rather than anything else really. Um, it's yeah it's it's got to take second place sometimes to to the one to to life i guess and there's it, certainly a hobby i mean the moment you hear me introduce a podcast with this podcast is brought to you by and then i and then i say somebody you know that's when you know that we might be getting a tiny bit of money but at the moment we're getting <laughs> we're getting nothing no um so i mean but i'm I'm enjoying it so so far. This has been a, a two year ride of um, of good fun. We found out that uh, Ed hates the Welsh. Um, 
we found out that Fred can't pronounce pow. <laughs> I forgot, uh, forgot about I that. Mean, yeah, there's, there's, you know, we're, we're really finding out Little different... things along the way. Yeah, all, all the things. Are, we found out the Quins can't win them at, away, oh, which yeah. I think is almost as bad as Bath's record away this season. Oh yeah, we should say Ad- Adam is a Bath fan, over. and they've they've been shocking for the past two seasons. Ah, we weren't as bad this season. Let's let's not. Let's Ford's not gone, nicely. Though, isn't he? Uh, he's Ford's... gone to back to Leicester. Um, Ford's fully gone. Can't begrudge him a move. Uh, wish him all the best. To be honest, um, who, who are you getting? Hmm. Who are you, who's replacing? Who's um, stepping up? We're doing the old switcheroo. Um, oh, you're Freddie having Burns. Freddie Burns, yeah. Freddie yeah, Burns. Um, and we've got Reese Priestland as well for a few more years. Um, oh yeah, of course. And Adam Hastings has gone to Glasgow, and we've signed someone from one of the Welsh Premiership teams. I think I can't remember the lad's name, um, but I think he'll be mainly third choice. Um, okay, but but yeah, I forgot about. Fre- I mean, Freddie. I think Freddie Burns is the better. Uh, well, they've both like got half, maybe I they've got they've know. got positives and negatives. Um, from Premiership point of view, um, George Ford is England's first choice ten. Um, he's I think he's there for the reason that he's been one of the standout tens along with Farrell at twelve mm. um, in the Premiership and deservedly gets his place. But obviously, with that comes. Um, absent it like times when he's absent from the premiership when he, when he has to be arrested um for by the rfu and things um whereas oh, freddie so. burns is not um not first choice i think he's a good fly half um and he's, he's originally from bath and um used to be in the academy there so he's coming home he's coming home he's coming home and the bath academy has produced a lot of players well, we've produced a lot of players. I don't think a lot of them have actually broken through until recently. Um, we've kind of poached. We poached London Irish's academy. Um, oh, yeah, I rem- yeah, I remember now. So thanks, thanks for them guys. Uh, but <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, it's sort of taken those younger players, say uh, Jonathan Joseph and Anthony Watson, coming over, um, and and Ford as well. Um, was Devoto Irish or was he? No, Devoto was from Bath, I think. Um, he was a Bath. He was a Bath original. Cast yeah, in their mould. Yeah, um, but we seem to be doing a lot more with our recruitment in the last few years. And obviously, when you when you're changing the youth setup and things, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, um, and it can take five or six years to come into fruition. Um, we've got quite a rich owner um who sort of bankrolled us through the years um and well, i think that's Palatow to... and quite a lot of yeah there's yeah there's some there's some big names sitting on the bath books yeah and, uh like that yeah. that can be weighing a team down uh as much as it will bring it up to the top uh i can in... but having a player a lions player and someone who starts pretty much one of the first names on the team sheet for wales i Oh yeah! Oh, for sure. I mean, he's phenomenal. I actually, here, here we go. I mean, you, may, well, Adam, being the busy man that he is, um, follows <laughs> rugby to the letter. He definitely listens to the Line Break podcast, definitely, um, all the time. But I, I actually discussed on a podcast that I would have dropped Falatau from the Lions and brought Hamish Watson instead. I wouldn't have dropped Falatau. <laughs> I might have dropped somebody else. Um... <laughs> I I I think the Scots would uh, living in Scotland as well, an Englishman living in uh, Glasgow. You, the the press would obviously quite felt pretty hard done by, um, and rugby fans up here that only two Scots were in the squad, um, uh-huh. especially after the Six Nations they had, and I I find it hard to disagree with them to be honest. Um, well, it's also, hard to when you you know you'll get killed if you do. Yeah, um, especially I, th- I think one of the things that killed it as well was not having any Scottish backroom staff in, involved with the Lions. Um, yeah. Gregor Townsend was offered a role with them, uh, but turned it down to focus on starting his career with Scotland. Um, 
rightly or wrongly. Um, it's open to interpretation, but um, yeah, just having the two of them, uh, yeah. Back so it's me. it's a quite yeah it's quite Scotland like and we, we I mean we've had this discussion before yeah um, I I mean I I made the call at the time and I don't know if you agree uh, but Billy Billy Vunapola um, Stander and what is he's lip traveling I think I this is something know. anyway this is something that we should, probably should have looked up but I just um, realized well, he's we, we can edit this bit out and then just come in and yeah. later and then say yeah this was up <laughs> um so yeah back back to back to line break um <laughs> two two years of doing this though two two years of absolute nonsense um crossed with some of the well some of the i actually am really proud of some of the analysis that we've done on the website yeah for sure um, um I, I mean some of you your see... articles some of barbs's articles that he's dropped on us over the years um yeah, some of fred's Fred, pieces as well fred fred's done some good stuff and, and your own uh, kicking one as well Can't well that, that one that one does what that one gets shared i'm interested in doing more stats ones like that because that one like people love to have that argument yeah and to have those stats just like there even if people disagree with whatever i've done um it, it's it's good it's helpful you know they yeah, post it, it and then point. they can have that discussion with facts exactly um which is which is good uh, and i think has a bit of longevity to it um which is which is really interesting but i know Fred, fred's piece about the um about the french uh, not being very good when they play away that that sort of stuff's quite interesting as well because that again there's a bit of stats behind it there's a little bit of excel spreadsheets you know yeah a lot, a lot, you know there's stuff like that it's really that's fun. is why I, I enjoy that I, I enjoy the sort of stats side of it and the, the nitty gritty. Might not be for everyone, but it's um, it's uh, it's certainly it can be visually boring. If if we look at something else that gets done, I mean, Nero's been posting. Well, he he was posting quite a lot of Super Rugby analysis, and he he's really into betting, so he kind of he does a he does a betting thing with a spread. I don't really understand it. No, I mean either. Uh, I, totally <laughs> I just over my head. I give him free reign, and then he's like, "Post this on the site," and he like, cop- I copy and paste it in, and then do spelling and grammar, and then leave it because uh, <laughs> I don't understand what is actually being said in the thing. But if you're interested in betting, I tell you, it just send us and again, send us an email, linebreakrugby at gmail dot com. The link will be in the description. Um, send an email if you want more of anything, or if you're gonna. Um, what was it? Come forward as a as a Argentinian, Italian, Japanese, or yeah, any as long of the as you've minor. Got a good working mic, um, and yeah, we're good. we're we're always happy to have more people on. Um, yeah, have a have a discussion. Um, yeah, just 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 get it on. Really, I, I'm I'm excited for line break. I think it's been good this year. Well, this. I don't know. It's what do you call it? It's not a financial year because it's just been twenty eighth of May to the twenty eighth of May. That's not really this year of line it's break. It's a bit late of a financial year, but yeah. This this year of line break. The line break, yeah. The line the line break year has been quite good. <laughs> the li- yeah. So that, well, I'm trying to think of a title for this episode. I don't think the line break year. A look behind the curtain. Could, could do uh, two years on. Where are we now? Uh, <laughs> where are we now <laughs> um i'm still producing podcasts uh the attempt to do it weekly is failing um adam oh, has got oh, a oh. proper full-time journalistic job cc's got a a decent uh, job in sports we can't really say more than that but it, it's pretty damn cool um yeah i think cc is the most you know we can't I, it's yeah he's up there for things achieved ah, sure um fred fred's i i don't know what fred, fred used to run the social media for some very interesting uh french rugby players i don't know if he does that anymore or if we can even talk about it that much um, no I'll maybe i have to take that a bit off <laughs> yeah just, we'll, we'll, cut we'll cut that i'm not, I'm not <laughs> just cut nothing but um fred, fred's fred's done some interesting things in the world of social media yeah um and everybody else is just doing their normal jobs, just trying to enjoy a bit of rugby. Yeah, for sure. 
so yeah, that's that's line break, and maybe we need to update the about us so we can put down what. Um... Actually, yeah, go to our website on the contact us page. <laughs> there, there you go. That's where the email is. That's that's where it is on our website, linebreakrugby dot com. The about us. What was it say about on your us. about us? The about us for Adam, a Bath fan and an Englishman lost in Glasgow who's forever struggling to find his way out. That's yeah. <laughs> Somehow, Ajen, Ajen's biggest overseas fans and oh, yeah, dreams of double nave cathedrals. That was uh, that must have been Fred. <laughs> that was when we were picking a top fourteen team, which sadly, Ajen are no more. Yeah, have they? What, what happened to them? They just disappeared. They, just, they got relegated. Uh, don't know how the the D two's doing this year. No, see, you're meant to be their fan, but yeah, yeah, I'm. I've, that's faltered in my my support for them has uh, dropped off recently. Your your dreams of double nave cathedrals have, uh, <laughs> have faltered and have faded toppled. away. Oh dear! I didn't even know if cathedrals were double naved. I don't really know what that is. But uh, yeah, there we go. I don't know either. I'm supposed to use words, but apparently Fred, uh, the Frenchman, who knows knows more words than me. Um, <laughs> right. Um, so we oh, well, the music can play. Uh, it's been 40 odd minutes of recording yeah and, uh, do, do you have anything else you want to talk about on the subject of you Ach, if anyone wants to ask more questions about say my job or whatever I, I'm happy to ask um, it's not might not be rugby related but I can I've been to cover a few Warriors games and things for papers uh, so I can give a tiny bit of insight into that but not a huge amount see yeah. I didn't I didn't know that and we're now going to have uh, 15 minute conversation about what he did <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was just like match reports and stuff it was similar to what I said with the football um, alright so you're, you're ready you, yeah. you report do the report straight afterwards basically um, journalists from usually national papers and things like that um, mm-hmm. are covering them and then there's one Glasgow paper the Evening Times um, that does it same interview managers afterwards everyone sort of just takes turns asking questions um and then when everyone's done um then it's usually picking a player afterwards or or two depending on the publication um but yeah same everyone just everyone uses the same content basically nobody's getting an edge on the other person um by doing little extra bits that's quite interesting yeah um, I, I suppose that's yeah, that's the way it's done. Uh, it seems quite fair, but it's quite funny as well. There's, there's no like, like scoops, like you can't go into the change rooms afterwards and be like, "What did you really think?" Yeah. Um, so for safer, because I this is for my football, but um, so I cover say the second tier of the like the football league in Scotland, like mm-hmm. regularly, um, and you go away to all these places. It's normally got someone from national media for each newspaper for most of the games so for the bigger games against um like hibs or something like that um team from edinburgh um you get more journalists down um you have sort of like a little journalist union when you're when you're watching games um obviously you don't get the highlights and stuff when you're played and if somebody misses say who passed for the, the goal or something or who um, slid in to give away the foul or something like that. You, you get a little, yeah. Everyone chips in and gives a little help and hand. It's absolutely hilarious. That's I love it, and it happens brilliant. with the rugby as well. Like uh, people, just who like, scored that? Who scored that? Yeah, oh, don't worry, I've got your back, mate. Uh, I, I don't want to. Yeah, I, has uh, anyone been trolled? Has uh, anyone, like... No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that to someone. Um, you get some people. Like Strettle, Strettle scores or something, or like uh, Leah, Leah Williams scores. Just down, like, oh, it's Ashton. It was Ashton. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that side of it's quite funny. Um, but yeah, generally everyone, even though the rivals sort of get on with each other and are willing to chip in and help each other out, all there for that's the a, same goal. That's a bit of con- uh, a bit of camaraderie there. That yeah, way. I'm I'm maybe not at the, the top level, so it might be slightly different when you get to say. Uh, <laughs> Your England so if someone, Wales or something like that. Yeah. Someone from United scored, and it's just like, oh, it was an own goal. Yeah, yeah. traumatic uh, moment. But yeah, um, yeah, at this level, it's sort of 
everyone's sort of helping each other out anyway that's quite cool right two two years on two years on i think that's quite a nice title yeah line break uh, line break's still going strong we're getting uh, more and more every day i mean we i mean obviously we started out with zero <laughs> subscribers we're nearly well hopefully we'll have crossed 300 by the time it comes out um we're getting if i look at the averages on views for the actual uh podcast online it's it's getting a lot of um it's getting a lot of hits so this week we're, uh, we've had 53 listens this week we had 141 last week so it's just going up and up um and hopefully that can continue long may that continue 100 i mean 141 listens for example for a podcast which we haven't advertised we haven't done anything and i've just i've just got to say thanks to anyone who's listening to this because it's really um as we, we do this as a hobby i think if no one was listening we'd probably still do it yeah yeah in fact that i mean that's just pretty much stuff what we're doing. Chess, basically yeah we, we like to vent <laughs> but it's still it's still really good fun to have uh interaction with people um and to know that there's there's people listening out there i mean i can i can look at these stats and you're obviously all really interested in the gatland episode because that one's shot to the top it's got double <laughs> the views of everything so apparently we need to talk more about gatland uh, i'm sure that'll happen during the lions uh no doubt with some of these picks but yeah, looking forward to it um, right the, the music will be playing now so we can just we can just say goodbye bye folks and if you're still here thanks for listening if you're still here after 40 odd <laughs> minutes you're, you're you're the diehard fan you're the one we want um I think you're the real one. mvp you are the real MVP. So this has been Adam. You now know what Adam's voice is. If we ever bring Adam up in another podcast, you know who he is now. Ah, oh, there you go. He's the he's the secret man who nobody ever knew was part of Line Break. In the background. He does exist. It's scary. Now we just... Who, who else hasn't been on for a while? Probably Alex. Alex has been absent. Yeah. Oh, he's another one. He's got, a, he's got a real job. <laughs> all these all these real job people 